Hello beautiful earth angels, welcome to Team Joanna. My name is Joanna. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I do hope you stay and if you like what you hear, please share it with somebody who might also benefit from this and also click the subscribe button. Uh, that really helps me spread the word. And the word that I'm spreading is pretty simple. It's who are you and how do you love yourself? That's basically what my job is here in the world. So if you are interested in any of those, um, happy to meet you. I hope you stay. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much. It is for you that I do this. Um, and uh, I adore each and every single one of you. I need you to know that. Without you being here on my channel, there would be not enough force for me to do this just because. So you being here um, entice me to keep going and especially in moments where I doubt myself a lot and it's been one of those times and I did not realize I was going to talk about this so here we go um, I suspect the reason why I'm being asked to mention this is because majority of you who will be listening to this who are watching this or will be watching this will be able to resonate with that feeling, that constant doubt. Am I doing the right thing? Am I good enough? Uh, will my message make a difference? Uh, is it gonna work? When this constant chatter in your head that's telling you things um, that really don't benefit you anymore. anymore. And what these things do, they tend to create a lot of resistance. So what I'm trying to say is that if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be channeling this information because I am experiencing a lot of resistance. <clears throat> and chances are, so are you. So if you are listening to this, if you are hearing this and you have been battling a lot with a sense of self, sense of who you are, your sense of purpose, not knowing your direction, confused in your direction, uh, seemingly having chosen a direction and now questioning the direction. If you are in that space, congratulations, apparently. You're exactly where you need to be before the next moment arrives. So apparently often what happens is when we step into the new, we often retract back to the old and I'm looking away because I'm seeing this and I'm just explaining with words what I'm seeing. So it's being suggested that when we fall into this doubt place, which for our ego is a protective mechanism, it's trying to protect us from some danger, we, uh, we tend to feel a lot of that resistance just before we step into something new. And they're showing me that to step into something new, despite feeling all this resistance and all this nagging and all this questioning and doubt, in order to step from that into this new, it requires courage. And courage is what we, uh, well, apparently we have, we just don't know that we have it yet because perhaps we haven't used it. So. The message is simply be courageous. So the message is obviously for you. And I am being asked to be courageous by doing the thing I love, but am resisting the most in order to get to the other side. And this other side for me and for you is a side where there is less doubt, less confusion, less self-rejection, less self-loathing. So if you are experiencing any of this, lack of energy, feeling lackluster, interesting word, thank you, um, feeling generally being all over the place or having emotional ups and downs, there is a volatility, in emotions being expressed. You may even feel anger, resentment, all these kind of things spiking up. Resistance, a lot of resistance, and perhaps resisting not even knowing what you are resisting. Again, the words are congratulations. 
you're exactly where you need to be, which also means you're about to step into the new. And when I hear this, there is a feeling in my chest that is, <gasps> it's, it's, <gasps> it's, that's the only way I can explain the feeling. So there is a bit of fear there. However, there is also positive anticipation. Why am I saying all of this? Because we are all in a space of tremendously sh fast shifting space. All right. And that means that who we are and who we will be can change very drastically and very quickly. And the reason for that is, and I'll explain what I mean. And the, Okay, what do I mean by that? For example, if you are a type of a person that doubts a lot, that's my past, um, and I want to achieve a space where I don't do as much doubting, some doubting, it's okay. It's protective mechanism. Too much doubting, not so okay. So in order for me to be that person, I have to let go of this part of me. And as we know, letting go is particularly difficult. Why is it difficult? It's difficult primarily because we have learned to depend on whatever it is that we need to let go of because it's now limiting, okay? So doubt, for example, in the past could have saved my butt because it made me uh, be more conscious of my choices. Let's use that as an example. But now, too much of that doubt is not preventing me from doing what I'm here to do, but it's certainly not allowing me to be at my full force. And again, the message is about me, but it's directly directed to you. Anything I talk about me is really because of you, is of what you're experiencing. So the conditions right now as are such that the change from being a doubting person to a less doubting person can happen very quickly because the energies are very supportive of this change. Now it explains to me why when I was tuning in to this energy and trying to figure out what I was going to talk about, which was a bad idea because it's never from my head. I'm just supposed to open myself and show up. Um, but what I heard or what I sensed was that we need to harness a window of opportunity. It's like we are at a space, energetically speaking, when it's like a, it's funny they're asking me to use the word vortex. It's like a vortex that takes us from point A to point B. And part of being in the vortex or as the, um, use a different analogy, the symptoms of feeling confusion are also the symptoms of being in the vortex. And the vortex to me represents change. It's kind of sort of what, I'm, what I was shown a week ago, almost like a wormhole, except it's like an energy. It's, it's, it's an energy portal to some other energy. That's the best way I can describe it. So we are in that portal right now. And because the change that we are experiencing is quite significant, and it's significant because it has the potential to ultimately shift our consciousness in a very fast, rapid space, which makes it very uncomfortable, okay? Big change happening very quickly makes it very uncomfortable. Anyway, point trying to make is if you are wanting to shift from being a person A to being a person B, you first must acknowledge what it is that you need to let go of. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And then use whatever tools you have to take you to this space in person B. So, for example, if you are someone who's doubting and you want to be less doubting person, in order for you to doubt less, you must develop a level of trust perhaps within yourself that you don't currently have which means in order for you to get from doubting to no doubt, no doubting, uh, your job, the process is to learn how to trust yourself. And 
trusting yourself is not easy. Well, if it was easy, we wouldn't be having issues with not trusting. But it's so not only is it not easy to learn how to trust, it is particularly difficult when we've learned to depend on the fact that we don't trust ourselves. We've learned to rely on the fact that we don't trust ourselves. So it's, it's a, again, it's a protective mechanism because perhaps when you chose something once, it really backfired on you or you get the idea. So take this opportunity, this window of opportunity, harness this window of opportunity by identifying key pieces about you that you currently have in terms of your by belief, in terms of your value, and ask yourself, how would you like to have those aspects of you change? So again, with the doubting person, if you have a tendency to doubt a lot, you're gonna to have to recognize the patterns that you use every day subconsciously where you repeatedly engage in doubting yourself. Because when you, when you are conscious of the repeating pattern, how you continually fuel not trusting yourself, you can learn how to deviate from it by choosing something different. So in other words, a lot of it is about the recognition of the tapes that are running in our background or the subconscious patterns. So it looks like we're being given homework. And the homework is for the sole purpose of understanding ourselves as a human being. Why is that important? Because as a human being, we are about to shift to higher consciousness. So, do yourself a favor and ask yourself this question this week. Who am I and who would I choose to be? Okay. Now, you may be a person who identifies with him or herself in beautiful ways, but you've got some nagging habit that you want to get let go of then the, the answer for you would be exactly the same person, less whatever it is that you want to let go of and have something else instead of it that's more positive. And they're talking about identity change. When our identity changes, our perception changes. So what's happening right now is we're all beginning to see and perceive things differently. We're learning how to see things differently and our perception is being heightened. A lot of us are becoming more of the observers. We are in the observation mode where we are learning how to observe our feelings and emotions rather than being those things. And effectively what that does, it offers us the opportunity to relax more within ourselves because we begin to understand and see very clearly that we are, for example, not our thoughts, not our emotions. So we become much less, what's the word? much less in control of those things, can I say it that way? Or those aspects of us are not as much in control of who we are. So taking the example again of someone who doubts. If you are someone who doubts a lot, you may have noticed some speaking patterns that you have and use on a regular basis 
in order to confirm that you should doubt yourself. For example, you might call yourself a loser. <clears throat> Pretty harmless, right? <clears throat> or so you think. But all that does, it just compounds further your inability to trust yourself. So becoming aware of those patterns becomes very important. Um, very interesting energy. I feel like I'm on a very fast train and somebody's stop, not stopping the train, but slowing down the train because I need to see something before the next stage. So I have a feeling that we are being asked to look at ourselves, look at ourselves closely to perhaps identify those aspects of ourselves we would like to let go of, like being a doubting person. Okay. In other words, it's important to identify what the heavy baggage is before you drop it. Right? And by heavy baggage, I mean anything that's slowing you down or keeping you away from being more of yourself, a limitation, something that weighs you down, pretty straightforward. Okay? And we're not necessarily getting rid of anything. What we are doing more than anything is we are reclaiming our true selves, which is beyond our ego identity. And we begin associate more with that aspect of ourselves rather than our ego. <clears throat> and that, it's almost, when that happens, it's like the ego loses control over you and you regain control over your ego. Now, I don't know how we're going to do that. It sounds pretty impressive to me. To do that, I feel it would be very impressive. It, it's definitely some skill involved with that because uh, we so easily identify with our ego. So what is the purpose of all of this? Why am I saying all of this? I'm saying all of this because apparently where we are going, energetically speaking, not a location, we automatically identify much less with the ego than we do in a 3D environment. And in order for us to identify less with the ego, we have to let go of some hardwired belief systems, okay? And do some exploratory work on yourself. For example, the simple question, who am I? offers up a lot of doors and opportunities to explore. Because depending on how you grew up, where you grew up, that answer may be very different. What we perceive and how we perceive is rapidly changing. That's what I saw. So it feels like it's a very fast moving energy. It's a very fast moving period. And as I'm saying this, to you. I'm being drawn a, a triangle. And um, this triangle, I'm asking, what is this? This triangle is almost like a doorway. So for some of you, this has to do with sac sacred geometry or somehow the idea of triangle. Triangle being like it's right there. Very important. But this triangle serves as a, as a gateway as a gateway to something else. Okay, so some of you will understand what this means. I'm not quite sure what this means for me, okay? We're also beginning to see things from different angles. One of the things that I was getting is that um, if you're listening to this, you might as well consider yourself a light worker as far as I'm concerned, even though I try not to use too many labels. We can't get away from labels entirely. Um, otherwise, nothing ha would have a meaning. Um, but if you are listening to this channel or this type of information, chances are pretty high that um, obviously there's something uniquely different about you because we're all uniquely different. 
but it's more than that. It's um, perhaps a feeling you've carried most of your life that somehow you're different, but you can't quite put a finger on it. Okay. So if you're listening to this and it resonates with you, I want to almost say high five. Um, you're not alone. And the purpose with that or the purpose of you being here is to basically spread light. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to you. And each and every person does that in their own unique individual way. Just simply by being. Um, before I turn on the camera, I heard plain as day, you're a visitor here. And I'm like, what? You are a visitor here. And then I understood, it dawned on me what it meant is um, if you're listening to this and the message is you are a visitor here, what does that mean to you? To me, it means, oh, okay, I'm not from here. Pretty straightforward. Um, but to some of you, that particular, uh, this, this may go, oh my God, now I understand. Now I understand why I'm different. Now I understand why I felt like I don't belong. Now I understand why I have this connection to these other realms and nobody else around me seems to have and I better not share it because they're going to think I'm nuts. So the message for you is you're a starseed. I don't normally talk about starseeds and things like that, but it, it, fears, it feels very much that way to me. I'm trying to harness the energy. It's flowing for me differently today. Learning all the time, all the time. Um, if you are listening to this, you are part of a group of people who are here to connect in a united front. And that means that you are part of something greater, something bigger. And each one of you con listening to this plays a very important key role in human history. Um, and you do this individually by essentially bringing your own light and shining your own light, which means you are not from here originally and you're here to help. So. If you're a star seed, you're a light worker. If you're a light worker, pretty much you're a star seed. That's what I'm being asked to say. I don't know any of this. I trust them more than I trust myself. I pulled a card to show me what is Earth going through right now. What's happening with us? And this is what I got. Different people see different things when they look at this picture. To me, I see a galloping horse and a pregnant woman. The pregnancy is the first thing that I see. So the galloping is movement. Horse to me represents freedom. We are surely, absolutely, surely moving into a different territory that we've never been to before. And I'm saying this on an energetic level. And with that comes a whole bunch of surprises. And just like a long time ago, when a woman was pregnant, she didn't have a choice to see whether it was a boy or a girl. She, the family, would have to wait until the baby was born to actually uh, to see what sex is the baby, female or male. And the surprise, that kind of a surprise, just imagine the feeling of that kind of a surprise. It's pretty big. And um, this pregnancy to me signifies every single one of us birthing a new aspect of ourselves. And I'm gonna say the higher vibrating aspect of ourselves, which means as we are moving forward in this energy and getting ready to birth our higher version versions of ourselves, we at the same time are dropping density which means we are letting go. 
and this may feel almost like a push-pull sensation. So remember when I was talking about resistance at the very beginning? This is showing me why there is such resistance because there is a part of me that knows where we're going. There's a part of me that understands I'm moving into higher vibration, but there's also another part of me called the ego that understands what it means. And it means that if I am moving in this higher vibrating version of myself, so I have to drop some of the ego attachments I have and to my ego, that's a scary thing. Because as I've mentioned before, the ego is afraid of its own death. We need ego. Ego is at an extremely important <clears throat> in this life. Very important. It's not about getting rid of the ego. Point is, that's where the resistance comes in. So again, if you've been experiencing a lot of resistance, chances are pretty high that the reason is because you're energetically galloping into a new space and there's a part of you that is uh, afraid to let go of where it is right now. And it's uh, perhaps even afraid of what this other thing is in the future. Okay. And there is an element of trust that's required with this. Ego wants information, backup numbers, data. Tell me, black and white. The whole trusting thing for the ego is, yeah, especially if ego is not feeling very comfortable with itself. And hence it doubts. So that's the energy that we are experiencing, if you will. Okay, the, 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 the coloring is very important to me as well. I see mostly greenery, dark greenery, and then I see uh, orange. Okay. To me, this is also associated with healing. Anything that's related to second chakra and the word shame came in. Interestingly enough, it's been coming up for me just very recently. Energies around shame. So for some of you, you may experience some shame type things being brought up to the surface. Okay, and it's not for you to dwell on it. It's for you to release it. Just allow yourself to feel that. I know it's not comfortable. Okay, but remember, harness the energy. This is a time where looking at these things becomes crucial, absolutely crucial. And I've said this before, oftentimes, very, very often, just simply by understanding something makes the symptoms go away. Okay. So if you've had some unresolved conflict with your mother, for example, because she mistreated you or didn't give you what you want, and as a result, you, could, you didn't learn how to trust, then you have to make peace somehow inside of you with your mother. Or that part of you that didn't develop trust, that part of you needs to make peace with your mother by understanding that your mother was the way she was or is for a very specific reason, for a very specific person. And in this example, your mother was the way she was in order for you to help you learn how to trust yourself and hence how to become much more independent. Okay, so by you not learning how to trust, you are now forced, if you will, to learn how to trust, right? And that's an important key element, trusting ourselves, trusting our intuition, we are moving much more into a heart-spaced vibration energy, which is all about feeling. So it's about understanding feeling, uh, uh, allowing the feeling, allowing emotion, allowing feeling and emotion to be just like another part of our how, how we speak, a language, and accepting it as a real a feeling. When you have a feeling and it's real to you, it's real to you doesn't have to be to anybody else. That's what, so if it's real to you, it's important. Did I say that I felt that there was going to be a lot of anger and blame? I didn't. What I saw was a whole bunch of anger and blame being thrown around, uh, thrown around. And the, the way I saw it, it was all of, all of 
light workers in a unified front. And then there was this whole bunch of people, almost like an opposition, uh, very angry and very blaming and very archaic almost. And I feel that this actually represents the dynamics between two types of consciousness. Oh, that makes perfect sense. That's the divide. That's the divide. Okay. Um, somehow this is important for the month of September. So we're shortly stepping into September. Um, it's I literally see two types of people, two types of consciousness. One, I'll call it the light workers. So they, there's a higher perception, more heart, and ones who are very much stuck in the 3D. And it's 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 very it's very interesting. I, and I hear the word archaic, archaic. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's some opposition happening. And I feel like this is not necessarily an individual life. I feel like it's all over. It's it's very interesting. I wonder if it has anything to do with the United States. It could possibly. But there is a lot of opposition and blame. And um, we have to make sure that we don't get triggered by it. Because if we get triggered by it, then we've lost our ground. That's interesting. Oh, okay. So speaking of doubt, you might experience some situations in your life where something happens and you and you and you go back to this doubt thing like you begin to doubt it's almost like mm -mm, mm -mm, no don't go there that's a test that's a test so for some of you it is trusting yourself it's really trusting yourself. When you trust yourself in who you are, when you believe in yourself and who you are, because people can blame you and, and, and say a whole bunch of things. If you're, when, you're, when you know where you stand, not very much can touch you. Okay? So that's why I see uh, this as being very important to work on ourselves. So, okay. There's going to be some situation where we will be confronted by a whole bunch of angry people, blaming and angry, a lot of blame and anger. And our job is not to take it personally. So you may experience it in your personal life or you it may be more global. That's kind of the energy I'm picking up. Okay, so just kind of FYI. Um, any sense of confusion, any sense, lack of purpose, sense of lack of purpose, any feelings of not knowing who you are anymore, not knowing who you want or what you want, is that kind of space? If you're feeling that and it's amplified, it's because very shortly there's an opening here. There's an opening. You are, uh, you are feeling this amped up because you're about to go through it. And I hear the word enlightenment. So the going through is enlightenment, is the word enlightenment. Okay. Obviously, you can't help but see this red moon. And what this is telling me is that as you go through to the other side, if you will, um, you'll have to look at some fears. Not dwell on it, but just look at them. It's you looking at something that eventually makes it go away. So there are some things you have unresolved or you chose not to look into. 
you will be faced with something in the near future that will be shown in your face, something from the past, because you need to look at it. So for example, the idea of confidence comes up. You might be facing someone who talks to you in a way that may, makes you doubt you, okay? So the purpose of that would be, if this person makes you doubt you, who are you in terms of what you believe that you're doubting? Which means if the person makes you doubt you, you don't know who you are. So you need to accept that you have an issue with not knowing who you are and you're going to decide or choose who you want to be. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're all facing fears one way or another. And when I say the word fears, don't get too hung up on, oh my God, fearful. No, it's fear is important. Fear saves our ass. Fear pre prevents us from doing stupid mistakes. Um, it keeps us alive. It's not Fear is not a bad thing. It's when we let fear stop us from living fuller lives. That's ultimately what we're, what we're moving into. Living fuller lives. Okay. I said, what do we need to be made aware of? Boom. Meditation. Meditation. It's number 22 or 27. 27. Meditation. Meditation helps you understand yourself better. That's what I just heard. Meditation also allows you to focus within. This is where the important key information is. Often answers to your questions. They come from inside. In order for you to have those questions, to hear those questions, you need to be quiet. You need to pay attention. You need to focus in, inward, inward. The problem is always on the inside. Always remember that. It's all an inside job. Okay. Some of you need to clear some space in your house. You need to do some clearing. Clear old energy, stagnating energy. You've accumulated too much. It's time to clean up. Also, for some of you, energetic boundaries, hugely important, absolutely important. Boundaries, 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 energetic boundaries. See, when you know where you stand and you're more confident, you often, more often than not, project a very strong aura. Okay? An aura is essentially, <clears throat> it's like your signature. You know, you stand out in a certain way. Okay? And because of that, <clears throat> the world naturally takes you more seriously because you take yourself more seriously. There's a message for somebody. This is a message for somebody. Okay, maybe for you. What does it say on the bottom? Improvements require, require persistence. Absolutely, yes. So if you are shifting from person who is doubting to person who is doubting less, don't expect that a week from now, <clears throat> you're going to wake up and you're going to have no doubt in your mind. That's very unrealistic. It can happen, yes, not usually the case. And that's because you have to develop a new pattern, a new pattern of thinking, a new pattern of processing information, and that takes time. Right? That takes time. So as long as you stay consistent and persistent with the process, of trusting yourself, for example, sooner or later, probably sooner, you'll see the fruit of your labor. But until then, keep doing the thing that's necessary to make this change possible. There's a message for some of you, don't forget your words. Don't forget your words. It feels like You've said something, but then you forgot about what you've said. I think for some of you, the message is practice what you preach. 
So I'm going to listen to it because it's probably a message for me too, but maybe there's a message in this for you. Practice what you preach. We as givers often have fantastic ideas how to take care of ourselves, but oftentimes we don't take that too seriously when it comes to ourselves. It's just nature of things. Okay. We are either moving to, what I see is balancing scales. We are either learning how to balance scales, how to balance, or we are agreeing on something and that makes it more balanced. That last statement felt to me like it's more global, globally speaking, almost feels political in a sense. Okay. Here's what I want to say. The world is being split apart so that it can be put back together in a different way. So it sounds like there is a split going on. There's a splitting going on. And the splitting is what requires our courage. And the splitting is the two types that I saw of consciousness. Oh, okay. Um... Hmm. Very interesting. I think that's all I have for you. I think that's all I have for you this time. Um, if you've lasted with me this long, I um, won't be doing the monthlies live. I'll resume for October, but I just my schedule is too all over the place. So uh, these will be posted shortly. And of course, if you would like a session with me or a healing session, that information is down below. Thank you so much. Uh, do comment. I do love every single one of your comments and um i do look forward to seeing you soon take care